Today, I'm going to show you how to design a sign-up form using Figma. I'll show you how I lay out all the content with wireframes, how I organize all of the layers, and how I apply different styling for the hover and active states. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a new Figma project. This video is part of a mini series where first I'm going to show you how to design the signup form. And then in my next video, I'm going to show you how to develop it using HTML and CSS. If you enjoy these mini series, please give this video a thumbs up. So jumping right into it, I found this image online of this purple design and I was really inspired to use it in a UI. So first I pulled this image and then I made some modifications to make it a bit brighter in this one. So I'm really using these images as inspiration for the signup form. And then using those images, I created this color palette. So first I have a column of more neutral colors, then I have different variations of a primary color, and I want to incorporate this purple in the UI in some way, so I added that purple swatch here. Using these images and this color palette, I'm going to create a signup form. So first I'm going to go over to the side and click the letter A, which brings up all the different kinds of frames I can add to the page, so I'm just going to add an iPhone. Then I'm going to start by defining the main layout of the page. So first I'm going to click the letter R for rectangle and add a rectangle to the page. So this rectangle will hold the entire signup form. So instead of calling it rectangle eight, which is the default, I'm instead going to call it wrapper. So this will be the wrapper that will hold the entire signup form. Then I'm going to get a little bit closer and I'm going to add some text to this. Initially, I'm going to do everything in grayscale and then I'll go back and add color and different treatment to make the design really pop. So first I click the letter T for text and then I'm going to add some text to the page. I'm just going to call it sign up form. Place that in the middle. And then I'm going to duplicate this by holding down the command key and then writing a basic description. Now I obviously don't want the title to have the same treatment as a description, so I'm going to click on this title and apply a different variation to it. So instead of it being set to 12, I'll set it to 32. And I don't want this description to be set to bold, so instead I'm going to set it to medium. Next, I'm going to work on the actual form elements. So I'm going to click R again for rectangle, and I'm adding a rectangle to the page. I'm going to make this fill a little bit darker so it stands out and I'm placing that in the center and then I'm going to add a label on top of the form so first I might just write name for the first one and then I will duplicate it and maybe I'll write email for the second one and then finally I'm going to add a button that will be for submitting the form so this is my initial wireframe for the signup form, and now I'm going to go back and add different treatment and styling so the design really pops. Now it's best to be as organized as possible as you work, so I'm going to grab this box and this name, and I'm going to put it in a group by holding Command G, and then I'm going to rename it Form Group, meaning that there's a label in here and a text field. So I'm going to take this and actually make it into a component. So I'm going to go up here and click create component. If you're brand new to Figma components, I have a whole tutorial that goes over it. So if you're interested in watching that video, I'll link it in the description below. So I made it into a component so that it'll be easy to manipulate things later on. So that way I can delete the email field and instead duplicate the name field and recall it email. That way I know for sure that these two elements will have the same styling. And then I'm also going to take this button and put it in a group and I'm going to call it button primary. And this one, I can also create a component for it as well. That way, as I start to build this design system, when I make a change once, it'll change everything holistically. Okay, so now I'm going to apply some styling so it looks a little bit better. So first I'm going to take this wrapper area and maybe initially I'll set it to one of my colors that I defined in my palette. Maybe I'll change it to this light pink color and see how that looks. 
And then I'm really interested in including this lighter image in the background in some way. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in my design. I'm going to increase the width of it. Now the image automatically goes to the top of the frame. So instead I'm going to drag it and bring it to the bottom and I'm going to rename it background. Next, I'm going to work on the styling for the form elements. So now I'm going to tap in here and change this master. So if I change the color of this field, it will automatically change the other field as well. Going to go back and look at the colors I defined and see if I want to use any of these. I might want to try with this darker pink color and see how that looks. I like how this looks, but I actually think I want to change this background color to just be white instead. So it pops out a little bit more and then I change these ones to this other lighter pink. And then I need some placeholder text in here. So I'm going to go into this master component and then add a text field. And I'm going to say, enter your name. Now, since this is a placeholder, I don't want it to be as vibrant as the actual label. So I'm going to reference my color palette and then choose this other gray color. Then I'm going to relabel the placeholder for the email field as well. And I think that looks pretty good so far. And then I'm going to add modifications to the submit button. So I actually want this button to be the primary color. So I'm going to modify it to be that pink color. And instead I will set this to white and bold. Then in terms of styling, I want everything to have a similar curve radius. So I'm going to go into each element and increase the curve radius. And then I'm just going to tighten up the alignment a little bit more. Now there are different ways that you can handle alignment and positioning. Typically, I like to leave everything as a multiple of four. So that way I know I can easily use REM when I'm developing it. But you can use whatever kind of grid system you would like. So now I have this entire sign up form completely designed. Just want to fix its position a little bit more. So I'm going to take these elements and put it in an entire group called form. And I'm just going to fix its position a little bit. Now, because I'm designing this for mobile, I know that the keyboard will pop up right over here. So I'm just going to leave it a little bit closer to the top of the page. Next, I'm just going to apply a different styling for the hover state and the active state. So I'm going to take this mobile design and copy it. So here I want to apply a different styling when it's hovered and then I'll make a different instance when there's a focus state. So here I'm going to change the fill instead to be white and I want to add a shadow effect. So I'm going to effects and I'm going to make the X and Y zero but I don't want it to be gray. Instead, I want it to be a light pink color. That color might be a little bit subtle, so I'm going to go back to my color palette, maybe modify it to this color. That looks pretty good. So I want this one to represent the hover state, and then I'll make a different modification for the active state. So when the user is actually on a form element, it really should have a slightly different treatment so the user is aware that they're actually on that element at that point in time. So here I'm going to apply a different styling when the user is actually on this field. I'm going to my fill again and I'm going to make it white. I want this email field to have the same kind of shadow effect as the hover state, so I'm going to tap into here. Click the four dots next to it and I'm going to add a style and I'm going to call it form hover. And then I'm going to click inside of that email field and then I'm going to apply that form hover. But this one I also want to indicate the active state so I'm actually going to add a stroke here. And I want the stroke to have the primary color. And then you can also play with the width of the line. So now I have the default design of the form and now I have the hover and the active states. And then I'm going to replace the text with a line so it's clear that the user is typing in at that moment. So just to review what I did, first I pulled some images as reference of inspiration for this project. 
So I took this image and then I applied modifications to make it a bit brighter and less opaque. And then using these images, I created this color palette that I wanted to use throughout my UI system. So I created these different swatches of colors. So for the mobile view, first I just laid out the content with wireframes and then I went back and inputted realistic content and styling. I tried to keep everything as organized as possible. So this first name field is actually a master component that then the email field and the other states are based off of. So that way, if I ever go back and decide to change this field in some way, it will change all the fields as well. Then the email field is actually an instance of the name field. And then I added a submit button at the bottom. Then I added a different styling for the hover effect and the focus date. So there you go. That's how I created the sign up form using Figma. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.